I have too many emotions right now. Gay frustration! I'm in gay f frustration. <laughs> Hey guys, my name is Farah, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I am doing something a little different. I'm going to be doing a reading vlog because Anyway the Wind Blows by Rainbow Rowell recently came out. It came out on the 6th, today is the 7th, and I just finished rereading Carry On and Wayward Son, and I thought I would take you guys along the journey of me reading through Anyway the Wind Blows. And this is my little nook. This is how I like to read. Welcome to my space. This is my big teddy bear, and yeah, uh, let's get started. This book is for you. Never let them tell you you are not magic. Aww. Also, this will contain spoilers, obviously, so read the book before watching this video. Lady Ruth. It's a new character. mother okay interesting I'm glad this is back I've been wondering when Simon will finally find out that the mage and Lucy are his parents I'm very excited for that revelation okay first of all I really ship Shepard and Penny they are like amazing together. I love the banter. I feel like he's a great fit for her. I really like Shepard as a character on a whole. I think he's like what we would be like if we ever met any magicians. When Penny's mom asks him like, who summoned a demon that cursed you? And he's like, I did it. Why would you do that? And he's like, I was curious if I could. <laughs> he's like, he like gets himself into trouble all the time and I kind of feel like Penny is the same in some ways. The first chapter was of Lady Ruth, I think, who is Lucy's mother and that means that Simon has family out there and that also makes me very excited because I just love family and stuff like that in novels. It just made, warms my heart a lot and he really really deserves to have a family who loves him and cares for him. Of course he already has a family with like Baz and Penny but still it would be really cool if he had some biological family as well to go with his found family. Also, I am so over the whole Baz and Simon being awkward around each other thing. I feel like it's a trope in a lot of books and honestly in life a lot of times as well. People just don't communicate and that causes a shit ton of problems. <laughs> And like I've been doing therapy for three years like I know communication is important and I know how important it is and it just angers me so much when all it would take is a little communication to sort things through and they just don't do it and I'm so over it and I want Simon and Baz to finally be happy together and that's all I want for from this book and I do feel like it will happen after a while but I just want to yell at them to communicate. Guys, communicate, please. You both love each other. You just need to talk to each other. A little communication goes a long way. Okay, um, Daphne disappearing came out of left field for me. I was like, what? But also I'm happy that we're getting to know more about Baz's family and like filling in the gaps that were left by the previous two books and his siblings getting names and things like that. That was really, really missing from the first two books. Fiona's crazy, but that's nothing new. Uh, I love how Penny is trying to help Shepard and I love how Shepard's like, it's cool, I'm just cursed by a demon, who cares? Simon's making me really mad. There was this chapter when Baz was constantly texting Simon and Simon wouldn't even reply and I'm like, Dude, what? Why? <laughs> gay frustration. I'm in gay f frustration. Also, I can't stop reading this. This is just like with the first two books. I start reading it and I can't stop. I literally can't stop. I feel like Shepard likes Penny. I'm just gonna say it. This book, just like the previous two, is also really funny. I love the humor that Rainbow Rowell has. And she does a great job of um, getting into different characters in the different POV chapters. And I really, really like that. Great as usual, but I already knew that she could write, so... Sorry, did 
Simon just leave? You don't do that! You don't do that to your boyfriend! Ever! Leave without an explanation. It's the most infuriating thing ever. I thought Simon would be better after America, but I feel like he fell back into his depression and that makes me really sad. I already know this book is going to be an emotional roller coaster. For some reason, the idea of Simon getting rid of his wings and tail makes me really sad. But I understand why, but it just, it, it just makes me sad. So Simon thought he should break up with Bass for some reason. I thought about throwing my book across the room, but then it looks like everything's gonna be okay. So no panic. <laughs> A part of me is like, communicate, use your words, Simon, you know? And I just really feel like communication could solve most of their problems but on the other side I do understand Simon's feelings about feeling inadequate for Baz and feeling the pain that Baz is still a magician and he's not and him dealing with all that but I really feel like they can go through this together and that will make their relationship stronger no relationship is easy I'm really glad that they're finally talking about it because I, I was about to be very mad <laughs> that Simon just got up and left. But now I'm at the part where they're finally talking about it and I really want to see them work through it. Also, yes, Simon says he didn't try. He did not try. And that's that's the main thing here. He kind of gave up on it before even trying. And I, and I do understand that like when you're depressed, you do feel like you can't give the other person enough. But depriving yourself of happiness and breaking the other person's heart because of that is never worth it. We love Baz in this household. We adore him. We stan him. The I love you. Finally. You used your words, Simon. Thank you. I'm proud of you. <laughs> I've killed so many things for you. That's not the same as I love you, okay? Also, can I just say that I love Agatha's character in that she's kind of an anti-hero. She doesn't want to be a hero, she doesn't want to be heroic, and, and she's still likable. It's not shown as like an inherently terrible flaw, and I really like that. It, it's realistic, it feels realistic to me. She just kind of gets wrapped up in it, but she doesn't want to be a hero, but she also doesn't want to feel weak anymore, and I think she really adds to this story. <laughs> I look like that Disney character with the droopy eye, Quasimodo. <laughs> okay, so I am currently about halfway through Anyway the Wind Blows. It is two days later. I took notes on the book while I was reading it. So, number one, I was extremely worried when Simon broke up with Baz. I was worried that it was going to drag out through the entire book of them being sad and miserable without each other, that it was going to be done for the drama, for the angst, and that they would only get back together at the end of the book, and I was very worried that that was what the author was going to do, and I am so happy that that is not what happened. I feel like it was more realistic this way, so Simon was depressed and worried and thinking that he couldn't make Bass happy and that's why he broke up with him and I'm glad that he quickly realized that that he was unhappy and that he wanted to be with Baz and that he went back to him. I'm so so happy that their breakup wasn't uh, drawn out for the sake of drama. I just don't like that. I don't feel like it's realistic. I feel like this was realistic thinking that they would be better off without each other and then quickly realizing that they weren't and I really liked the part where Simon says he wants to try because he never really tried. And I did feel like that truly was the case. Like throughout the book, he wasn't willing to try this relationship really because he was so sure that it would end after a while that he wasn't putting any effort in. And I'm so happy to see that he is putting effort in right now. And I feel like this is a very good representation of the ups and downs that a relationship can go through. I do feel like that Agatha and Naya may be a thing. Uh, I wasn't sure in the beginning, but 
uh, as I'm reading through the book, I do think that that may be a romantic thing that will happen after a while. We'll see. I'm interested to see. Also, I thought that after Wayward Son, Agatha would be more in the middle of things in this book, but she's kind of off doing her own thing in this book as well. I do want more of like Agatha, Simon, Penelope content because they were supposed to be originally a trio of friends and it's kind of weird for me that Agatha completely dropped them and uh, they are just like no longer part of each other's lives. That's kind of strange for me. Like I understand that Simon and Agatha broke up but still. Yes, I've been excited for this since I finished Carry On. I really am really excited to see Simon find out about his parentage. I feel like bringing in Lady Salisbury, Lady Ruth is a tool for that. I'm wondering how it's gonna happen because right now nobody really knows for sure except us readers and I'm really excited for Simon to finally find out. I missed that in Wayward Son that they didn't really talk more about the fact that the mage was his biological father and Lucy was his biological mother. I want to see him find out about that and I'm very excited for that. This is just like a throw-in thing. Um, throughout Carry On, Agatha and Simon and Baz were in kind of like a weird love triangle in that Agatha thought she liked Baz and Baz liked Simon and Simon was in love with Baz but he didn't know and he was jealous of Baz but he thought he was jealous because of Agatha and that was a whole mess. I just wanted to see Agatha's reaction to the fact that Simon and Baz ended up together. I thought that would be hilarious because that's like the biggest plot twist ever for her in her world. Like. I wanted to see her reaction to that and we never got that but but we did get a little part of like Agatha talking to Niamh about it and I love that Niamh was like Snow dumped you for a pitch and it wasn't the fact that it was a boy it was he dumped you for a fucking pitch <laughs> also I adore Baz with all of my being so I just love love his point of views, love any everything about him. Oh, when, when Baz is trying to get Simon to wear his clothes, that was like so domestic and wholesome. I love that. That it was so cute. Of course, there are still like worries and troubles, but I'm glad they're working through it because that is what a relationship should be. People should not just get up and leave. They should work through it. We didn't really get a clear thing about is Lucy actually dead? And well, she has to be because she she was visiting as a ghost, but that was that's still unclear like how she died. I originally thought that she died from childbirth, but now I'm not so sure. So I'm wondering if we're going to find out about that or more about that. Okay, this quote. I, I wrote this down because this was such a beautiful quote. I can touch you less gently, but I won't love you less kindly. And that was just such a beautiful and wholesome and sweet and loving thing to say and it contained everything in it. This is so far the leading quote of this entire book. I don't think there will be anything else that will be better than this quote but I had to write it down. It was, it, it really, really spoke to me. We love the Baz and Fiona banter. That is comedy gold. Um, absolutely here for it. Love it. <laughs> the shepherd being engaged to a demon. I was not expecting that at all but this is such an interesting part of the story and I'm excited to see how they get out of it. Also I really ship Shepard and Penny and I can't wait until they get together. Yeah that's where I'm at so far. I'm halfway through the book. I'm excited to continue reading. Yeah I'll update you again soon. See you later! Simon just found his family. So beautiful. <sighs> I have too many emotions right now. And Lucy's candle went off because she brought Simon home. A rosebud boy. I've been waiting for this since Carry On and I just... <sighs> I am so happy Simon has a sword again. And the fact that it's a family sword makes it even better. Any, Neymar. I finished it. <sighs> I feel like I wanted something more. It just ended so abruptly. I can't believe I finished it. And there isn't any more. 
Mm. I loved this. I loved the entire trilogy, to be fair, but I loved it. So I just finished Any Way the Wind Blows last night and this is going to be my wrap up, my final thoughts of the book and I'm going to be sharing with you some notes that I took while reading the second half of the book. So there was this part where Simon was trying to convince Baz that it would be okay for Baz to drink blood from Simon because he would let him and that made me really uncomfortable and not because of the idea of the thing but because it made Baz super uncomfortable. I felt like secondhand embarrassment or I don't even know when Simon was going on and about it and I was like I wanted to like yell at him can't you see that it's making Baz uncomfortable but it made Baz uncomfortable. Baz doesn't want to drink human blood and that's just it. Like I did, didn't understand why Simon didn't get that, why he didn't see that it was making Baz super uncomfortable that he was bringing it up and that it would have made Baz feel like less of a human if he were to start drinking human blood. So that, that just bothered me, that didn't sit right with me. Simon really wasn't picking up on Baz's cues when he was just trying to tell him over and over again that it makes him uncomfortable and that he doesn't want to do that. One conversation should have been enough. The problem is not the idea that Simon would give his blood to Baz willingly, it was the fact that he brought it up even after Baz made it clear that it made him uncomfortable and that he didn't want to do it. Uh, this is just a random mum, but why the hell is he called a Smith? Smith Richards. Like, why the double Smith? That was just kind of like laughable in my opinion and I was like couldn't have they come up with a better name or just leave it at Smith Richards. I didn't understand why it was Smith Smith Richards. It's like, what were his parents thinking? Like, uh, yeah, ever since he first appeared, I knew he would be trying to fix Simon's magic and use it as his big proof. For a second, I thought that he might be able to do it because Sam Simon was born a magician. Yeah, uh, there were times that I thought his magic would come back, but I also didn't want it to happen in the book because uh, I felt like the story is better if he like loses his magic and learns to live with it instead of you know having him lose it be depressed over it and then have the entire thing fixed by him getting his magic back i wouldn't have liked that and i'm glad that the book didn't go in that direction because it would have been just a quick fix and i think the story was more about him learning to live with his new normal and if he would have just become a magician again. That would have ruined the whole thing. There were a few times when I thought the book was going in that direction, but it didn't, and I'm glad it didn't. I liked it better this way. I thought it was really interesting what Rainbow Rowell did with Smith Richards in this book. Uh, I liked that storyline. Uh, I thought it was interesting, and I liked that it was explained like he he brought the magic up from people, and then it phased out. I thought that was really interesting. He was an interesting villain. Uh, honestly, but I would have liked to see more of his intentions. I like I think he wanted power over the world of mages, but that wasn't as clear as it maybe could have been. Like his his goal wasn't that clear. I also would have liked to know more about the mages intentions, like when he was trying to steal Simon's magic. Yeah, the the villain's intentions weren't always super clear. When it was revealed that Fiona was dating Nico, I was like, I definitely should have seen that coming. Like when I did my reread of Carry On, I definitely felt that there was something between them when they were young and yeah, it made sense that they got back together again because there was always like something there. It is kind of ironic that Fiona is a vampire hunter and Nico is a vampire and I love the part when Baz asks him like, have you like noticed that she's a vampire hunter and he's like, have you? And I was like, burn. True. Oh, I, I had a wild thought throughout the way, like, what if Smith Richards is Jamie Salisbury himself? That would have been quite a twist, and I was also wondering if Jamie was dead, like, did Smith Richards kill him? But that was real, that wasn't the case, but, like, I wrote that down, I had that thought halfway through the book. Uh, yeah, uh, fixing Shepard's curse felt a little bit too easy and kind of very fast, because they were going at a very slow pace trying to figure it out and then boom suddenly Penelope sa Simon, uh, summons a demon and she fixes it and that felt kind of a bit too fast and a bit too out of the blue for me. Okay so there was this part when Baz called Simon his rosebud boy. Saying that I melted in the spot is an understatement. Like I I was destroyed. Like that was the sweetest thing, especially since we know the context. One of my favorite moments in the entire book. But I died when Simon found his family. Like that was 
the best part of the entire thing and uh, yeah you could you could see it in the vlog that I was like totally emotionally wrecked but in a good way <laughs> when that happened I was so so happy for him and it just warmed my little heart Agatha in this book felt very detached from the entire thing. It felt like she was on a completely different space and storyline and kind of made me feel like in the first book Agatha was just put there as a supporting character and she wasn't meant to be a big character. She was just meant to be there to like prevent Simon and Baz from getting together sooner. That's what I feel like and then and then the writer kind of got stuck with Agatha and I felt like she didn't really know what to do with her. It felt weird to me because when I first started reading Carry On, it felt like they were this trio, Simon, Penelope, and Agatha. Then she just kind of dropped out from the entire thing, from the entire friendship, and I was like, was there even a friendship at all? Because it felt like there wasn't. And that was just kind of weird for me, and I would have liked her to be with the group more. But then again, if they weren't even really friends in the first place, then why did the beginning of Carry On make it seem like they had been friends for years. But I did like her ending as a goat herd and I do want to, I feel like that fits her quite well and I also want to say that I did ship her, ship her with Niam and I was so happy that I was right so. The book ended kind of abruptly for me. Um, I felt like the showdown with Smith Richards was kind of underwhelming I guess. Uh, I also wanted more of Simon with Lady Salisbury and Jamie and finding more about that. I wanted to know how Lucy died because it wasn't quite clear. Like I think she died from childbirth but that wasn't clear. The part where the candle flickered for a second when they were trying when they were a bit doubting like if Simon really was a Salisbury. Uh, that was such a beautiful moment. I love that Lucy just came back for a second to let her family know that she had gotten her son home and now she can rest and that just that was just beautiful. I like the whole thing with the sword. Uh, I've been wanting Simon to get a sword since Wayward Son. I felt like that would help him a lot because he was not really good with magic but he was always good with the sword and he finally got one. It was a family heirloom and that just makes it extra special. When, when he pulled the sword out and everyone froze I was like oh my god it's a family thing and this is how they're gonna find out. I like that a lot. Fiona breaking into Watford for the wedding ring uh, that kind of felt like thrown in there like I thought she was breaking in for something more important or something bigger was going on than just a wedding that felt kind of like the writer didn't really know what to do with that because she ended Wayward Son with there's trouble at Watford and there wasn't really trouble at Watford except that Fiona broke in but she got bailed out within like the first I don't know few chapters of the book she already got bailed out and that problem was already solved and I thought there was like a bigger problem I liked the storyline with the go to Watford I liked that Simon did not leave the relationship and finally put into some work I liked reading him and Baz uh, working through and na navigating their relationship. I wanted more of Simon just processing the fact that he's the major son. I felt like the writer didn't really know what to do with that so she just kind of left it open. I wanted more of that. I wanted more of Simon with his family and I just wanted more on that as a whole and also I, I just realized this that Simon was going to get his wings off and then he didn't and then it wasn't clear at the end of the book if, we, if he was still going to do the surgery or not like I hope not in my head canon he keeps the wings I feel like they they make him special and f make him feel more connected to the world of mages because he, he still is a mage even though he lost his magic but overall uh, every storyline had a good ending and um, even though I felt like it ended a bit abruptly and I would have liked more, it was a happy ending. I would have liked to see more of Bass figuring out his vampire stuff because uh, that I felt like that was always something that he wanted to do but he never really got some answers because he got close to vampires a few times and he got some information from here and there but like it wasn't clear to Baz and it isn't clear to us as the reader like how long the vampires age, how long they live, what's going on and there would have needed to be more of that. I really like the part where Baz brings Daphne home and she says your mother wouldn't have fallen for it and then he thinks of what Fiona said that his mother isn't here and that in in the moment he should focus on who is here. He thinks my mom wouldn't have let me live but she isn't here and then he turns to Daphne and calls her mom and that was 
I, I really liked that moment. I felt like that was very special. It's honoring and loving those you've lost, but at the same time, giving space for new people in your life. That felt like the moment that Baz really did feel like Daphne was his stepmother. Like, she's not gonna replace his mother, but that felt like the moment where he finally let her have a place in his heart as his mother. We got some cute snow bass content, we got some adventure, we got Simon finding his family, and overall, I liked it. I, I do feel like some things are missing that I would have liked to see more of, but it's a satisfying ending. That is my reading vlog and review of Anyway the Wind Blows by Rainbow Rowell, which is the third installment of the Simon Snow series. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you next week for a brand new video. Tell me your thoughts about the book in the comments down below, and I'll see you next week in a brand new video, and don't forget to subscribe. Toodles! Bye.